I'm actually going to talk. Uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit about integrating uh, Elixir with uh, with telephony, um, uh, uh, working with Asterix PBX, uh, kind of like Adhesion. If you're familiar with Adhesion, I'm also going to show you a uh, auto administration package that I uh, that I wrote. Um, so I'm actually going to take you through, uh, depending on the time and glitches and stuff, I'll actually build up a, a little voice survey application. Uh, so we'll configure some questions in the database uh, and then we'll actually call it and have it to actually text the speech and read the questions, allow you to pick choices and, uh, and then do some reporting on that. So who am I? Uh, I already said my name, a uh, bunch of information in there. Um, We've been, doing, uh, we've been doing Elixir now for almost two years. Uh, I've been doing it for about a year and a half full time. Uh, last year I was at the conference, I presented on a uh, telephony gateway that I wrote in, in Elixir. Uh, since that, um, I've ported a uh, software licensing system that I had uh, written originally in Rails. I poured that over to uh, Elixir and Phoenix. Um, I had another uh, call-out, emergency call-out system that uh, we use at a local hospital. Uh, if it's an all-hands-on-deck, uh, they hit a button, it calls all the employees, uh, says, hey, there's an emergency, you've got to come in, press 1 to accept or 2 to decline. I had a lot of problems getting that working with Rails and Adhesion. Um, I ended up, by almost by necessity, rewriting it in Elixir, and it works awesome now. And uh, another exciting project, we're just starting a soft client, uh, soft phone um, pro uh, project where we're going to do a phone in a browser using WebRTC for the media and I'll be doing all the phone signaling over uh, Phoenix channels. So that one's just getting started and it's pretty cool. So what I'm going to talk about today is this voice survey application, so database um, with, uh, with some with some stuff in there um, and uh, so it'll read out the questions and then touch tone responses. Uh, this is, although it's a demo now, it, it is a product that we're looking at and I'll probably be productizing this soon. So it supports multiple surveys, multiple choice questions and some very simple reporting right now. So it's a Phoenix, uh, Elixir Phoenix application. Um, our, our product that we, use, uh, that we have runs uh, MySQL, so um, I wrote this in MySQL uh, using Echo and, uh, and an auto administration tool that I wrote called uh, Xadmin. Uh, it uses Asterix PBX and uh, uh, another package I wrote called SpeakX, uh, which is inspired by Ruby's uh, Adhesion. Um, and then underneath that it uses uh, XAMI and, and Earl AGI. Uh, AMI for the third party call control and the AGI for in call handling. So, is that readable up there? Yeah. So, a pretty simple uh, data model here. So, we have a uh, uh, model for a survey, basically, has the name of the survey, which we'll read out, um, and then uh, the number that's called in to activate that survey. So, uh, uh, program different numbers, it comes in, it'll pick the survey based on what number they called. Um, a question with a name, uh, an answer, or sorry, choice. So choice belong to the questions and uh, program the digit that, uh, that they'll press to respond to that, key, uh, to that choice uh, and answer when they take the survey. So the seating is the model I chose to actually represent someone sitting down and taking the survey. Um, and in there we'll know what number they called from and then obviously answers when they pick the, uh, when they pick the choices. Okay, so we're going to attempt to build this. I'll look at that. All right. So I've got uh, I've got some instructions. I posted all this up on GitHub. So now it, it the, I timed it. It was going to take too long to do it all. So I prepped a little bit. Uh, I uh, did the depths and the depths get and all that stuff. You can't see it. Command you, F1. Oh, Command F1. Ah. Okay. Uh, let's make that a little smaller. Okay. So, you guys can see it now. It's a little bit cut off. 
Okay, so create a new project, uh, mix uh, Phoenix new, um, then go in, set up the database, uh, run mix uh, echo create, which I've got to do, and then uh, I've already prepped these models. Uh, so we have the survey model. Actually, I already talked about that in the picture. So um, basically, we got to go in and do a couple edits. We have to uh, we have to just set up the has many relationships here. Uh, so by default, the um, the uh, commands to to create the uh, the models. Actually, I didn't really talk about that. So you know, mix Phoenix uh, Gen model choice choices, and then uh, the key and the name, uh, the seating is uh, the caller name, and then the server ID is a uh, reference to servers, um, so on. So fairly basic. Hopefully you guys have a little bit of experience with Phoenix, or I might be going over your head. But um, So in this file, we had to, we had to add these two, uh, two relationships. Uh, in this file, we had to add the two has many uh, relationships for the choices and the answers. In the choices, I had to add the answers. Um, and in the seating, I had to add the uh, has many uh, for the answer. And for the answers, uh, that was actually I just added the uh, the keys in the uh, required fields. Okay. And then obviously, uh, so we put in the uh, ex admin uh, dependency, run depths get all that fun stuff. And uh, the next step will actually to be to install uh, ex admin. So I will. Go to the console here. Is that showing up okay? I might want to shrink that a bit. Okay, so um, first thing, let's actually create the uh, create the the table, the database. Create, and then we'll do the migration. What did I do? Oh, I o I o. I always misspell that. Okay, um, and then we'll install uh, uh, xadmin. So mix uh, admin dot install, and it gives some messages to do some configuration. So we'll pop back to the source code now, and we'll take a look at that. So in the config, it populated some uh, template the templates. Uh, it uses uh, Haml, so uh, and then some other uh, some other settings, and that looks good. In the dev, uh, that looks good there. So everything looks good there. And then if we go back to the uh, the instructions here, um, there's also some router stuff that we have to set up. So we have to set up the routes. So we go back to the uh, to the router. And I've just, uh, I'll just uncomment this stuff. I kind of prepped it up a little bit to save some time. My terrible typing. Okay, so two lines. So use the uh, xadmin router and, the, uh, and, and then just uh, use this DSL for uh, or macro for setting up the routes. Uh, we save that thing. And we should be almost ready. Let me just, oh, I got to go back to. Ah, here we go. So there's some configuration that we have to add. I I uh, I have that there, so I'll do that, and we should be ready to go. So let's run. Uh, let's actually just check the document, make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh yes, one more thing. So uh, we have to add the uh, the paging into the repo. So let's go back to the source code, go into the repo, and uncomment this line, and go to the console, and let's try to run it. Okay, and we cross our fingers. Oops, okay, so that's the basic template that Phoenix creates, and then we should have a admin namespace bummer. Okay, so something mixed up. 
So I missed a step somewhere. Okay, so this is where I do a fallback. Um, let me just go through the rest. I, I've got a I got a version here that should be working. So um, this was I, I won't try to debug this right now. I, I missed the configuration step somewhere. Um, so. And let's go back to here. So, okay. So the the next step is to actually create the uh, create the the resources. So we'll, we'd run a command like this. And so admin gen resource and then survey and then we run that for our question and we run that for the choice and then we run that for the seating and did I do answer yet? Okay. <coughs> So if we go back to our source, we see what that did. So uh, we have this admin folder under the under the web uh, web directory, and it basically creates this uh, creates this uh, just dummy uh, or a blank file. Um, so uh, you know, typically I namespace with uh, with things with uh, x admin in the middle. Uh, and then resource, uh, register resource. So these are all generated. Uh, and, um, and basically what that will do is uh, that will then produce a GUI that is pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, so uh, let's go back here. How am I doing for time? Quite a bit yet. Okay, so, okay, and let's, uh, so. okay, so I'm going to just go into this working version. Um, this choice is, uh, is default. I have a little bit of fancy stuff here that I was going to work into, so let's just comment that out. Okay, so that's the survey page. Um, and then the question, we can uh, comment that out too. Uh, okay, so let's just save that and uh, let's run this thing. Oh, thank you. Perfect. Okay, so we're here. Uh, Go we're running that, and let's see what that looks like. If this doesn't work, I'm going home. Okay. <laughs> so, with those blank files, when you run the, you know, the, the set up the resource with the mix task, you get basically um, this uh, this blank shell. Uh, so, uh, seatings, choices. So the menu is automatically populated. Uh, so let's go in and create a survey. Uh, so we'll call this Elixir Conf and uh, 5555 for uh, a calling number. And uh, so we create that. And then we can go in and create a, uh, a question. So a new question. Uh, enjoying the conference. What happened there? Oh, I that's a glitch. Thank you. And then we'll create a choice. Answer one for yes. Now this is a pretty basic GUI. It could be optimized quite a bit, right? So, um, but it, just to it to demonstrate, uh, no, uh, 
Boom. Okay, so now we have uh, we have that configured, and we should be ready to go. Uh, so we have a telephone here, and we cross our fingers. Now, one more step. <coughs> I found a glitch this morning, and uh, I don't have the, an idea why this is doing this, but um, it seems like it wants to be built. Uh, where did my phone go? Welcome to the Eclixir Conf survey. This survey has one question. Press the star key to repeat the question. Let's start. First question. Are you enjoying the conference? You have two choices. Press one for yes. Press two for no. Please choose. Five is not a choice. Please try again. First question. You have chosen. Yes. Press 1 to confirm, or any other key to repeat the question. First question. That concludes the survey. Thank you for participating. So, uh, so there, that's how... I'll go, I'll just uh, quickly go back and touch on a couple things here, but... Um, and then, so we have... Uh, so I, I added a little bit of code. I'll, I'll show you this code in a minute. But from a reporting perspective, um, I just extended the, uh, the show page uh, for the surveys to actually list the questions and then the results. So as we take the survey, this will be updated. So I'll just take you through that code really quick. Um, so let's make that a little bit smaller. Okay, so the survey... Uh, so, admin survey, I'm still in the old file, there we go. So if I look at the admin survey file, so, um, so I I, uh, I added a show um, a show handler. Uh, so in the show handler, uh, call the attributes table. So that generates that first panel. Uh, the second panel just generates the questions, uh, and then the third panel, which is more complicated, the reporting panel. Uh, basically, I, I go in there, get a seating count, uh, check to make sure there's something there, uh, and then I just uh, using a DSL to to map out the HTML. Uh, create a table head with uh, with question responses and percent, and in the body of the table, I just calculate the calculate it based on the uh, based on the values. So so extending using act uh, it, uh, using ex uh, admin to extend the uh, extend and, and and make the uh, the GUI a lot more rich. You can do that. Um, and uh, oh, I guess I didn't show you the call controller. So the other piece, obviously, here is the, uh, the call controller. Uh, there are two components to that. First of all, you need a router. So you need a router. So in here, you can actually, uh, when the call comes in, you can uh, look at the number, uh, who it's to or who it's from, and so on, and then route this call to different... Uh, different uh, call controllers. So in this case, I'm just doing a default. I'm routing everything to the survey controller. And in the survey controller, uh, basically we have uh, uh, a DSL for handling the call. So, um, so it automatically, when the call comes in, is answered. It comes and it comes and runs the, uh, the run call back with a call object. And then uh, you, can answer the, you can answer that call. Um, 
then I run my, uh, my function for running the survey, and then I hang up the call and I terminate running the survey. Uh, I go out to the channel and I get the, uh, the two value in the channel. That's uh, the number that was called. Uh, I get the calling number, and then I create a new survey. Uh, uh, sorry, I get the survey uh, based on the two value. So I go and query and I get the, the survey um, model. Uh, I insert a new, uh, new seating for this, and then I say welcome to the survey, uh, then handle questions. Basically, handle questions just uh, sets up the initial prompt. Survey has so many questions, yada, yada, yada. Uh, interrupt so that you can actually skip the prompt and don't have to listen to the whole annoying thing. Uh, then I uh, just iterate over the, um, uh, over the questions and build um, and, and call handle question, uh, which will do the menu. I'll show you in a second and then just say an exiting prompt. Um, so the, the me, uh, menu prompts, uh, just go through and, and build, uh, you know, let's say it's the first question, the last question, um, and then uh, I, I go through the, the database through the choices, get the names, build that up all backwards, uh, please cho choose, and then I reverse it, and then you come into the fun stuff. So that was the build menu prompts. Uh, then I build a matcher. Uh, so I take the, the digits, the, the available choices for that particular question, put them all together in a char list, and then I call this uh, menu API uh, with the call object. Uh, all the prompts or phrases that it's going to read a timeout value and it tries, and then uh, you can match on, uh, in this case I'm matching on all the valid uh, entries, and it'll run the call, this uh, anonymous function with the press, uh, I go in and I take a look at it, uh, call a validate question to do that second menu to say, are you sh uh, is this what you want? And if it's okay, I build, a, build an answer, uh, set up the settings, insert it in the repo, um, match on a star to repeat the question, uh, handle the invalid, uh, an invalid press, and handle a timeout. And of course, it's going to run this menu for the number of uh, the number of retries right here for three. So it would repeat it three times and then it would fail out. And uh, then the validate question is just another little menu that says you know press one and so so that's the code that it takes uh, to to run uh, the survey. And then the only other thing is the configuration for that uh, dev dot exs. So there's two pieces of configuration you need here. So set up the AMI link, point it to the asterisk server, and uh, set up the AGI um, to, allow the, uh, to allow the callbacks. And that's basically uh, what it takes to build a voice survey application. Okay. So... In closing, uh, so like I said, uh, another year gone by since the conference last year. We're still going strong with Elixir. Um, got to a point in our company where I don't have to sell it anymore. Um, it basically has sold itself. So now when I say, well, I'm going to build something in Elixir, there's no question. Okay, cool. Or I say, I'm going to build something, and uh, my business partner says, are you doing Elixir? So, um, <laughs> Yeah, no, it's... it's uh, and uh, it, it, was a, it was a big hurdle uh, to, to actually get the first product done in, in Elixir. I actually moonlighted it for a long time um, and had kind of, you know, he thought it was a great idea. Uh, but when it was time to say, I'm ready to cut it over, I'm ready to, to throw away our, our C version and replace it with Elixir, it's like, uh, no, I don't think so. And so it took a little while, and, uh, but I don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, Phoenix rocks. I, I love Phoenix. Um, well, Elixir is cool. Uh, but now yeah, I've had a really enjoyed uh, working with uh, Phoenix. Uh, I'm seeing great progress in the community. The community is getting bigger. Uh, we're starting to see a lot more packages out there, um, which is exciting. Still a ways to go. Um, obviously, when I, I this or the app that I ported over from from Rails, um, it used Active Admin. Rails and Adhesion. Uh, so when I went to port it over. I thought, okay, well, Rails, Phoenix, that's not bad, but Active Admin, 
well, there is none, so okay, I've got to write that. And, uh, and then the whole adhesion thing, there wasn't one of those, so I had to write that. Um, but now I'm, I've contributed those back to open source, so uh, that's kind of exciting. Um, there's still a long, long way to go on xAdmin. Uh, it's, it's kind of in a not, better, not much better than a prototype stage right now. Um, I'd love some help on that, so if anyone's looking to contribute to uh, some open source, let me know. And SpeakX has a long ways to go too. So um, I've got you know, some of the DSL in place there, but there's, there's a lot more of the DSL to, uh, to implement. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next year. All right. Thank you.